Rick and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be starting with the uh, removal of the old rug and trim of the uh, 2006 Mustang. The first thing that we need to do is to remove the seats. Uh, then after we remove the seats, we're going to remove a certain amount of trim. And then once that trim's gone, hopefully we'll be able to get the old rug out. And that's what we're going to do on today's video. Uh, tomorrow's video, what we'll be doing is cleaning the metal, uh, getting rid of any rust that happens to be there. And then I'm going to be putting some uh, insulation down that is for sound and heat. Uh, from there, there'll be another layer of uh, insulation and then the new rug will be in place and we'll trim that. So this will be a multi-part video and I'm hoping to uh, give you short snippets of the different things that I do. Rather than me just wrenching and you watching some boring video, I'm going to try and cut those, uh, those boring moments out so you can just see the important things. Uh, so first, what we need to do is take a look at the tools that I will be using. Now here's a look at the tools that uh, I will be using. Um, pretty much standard uh, screwdrivers, uh, cutters, uh, you'll see some sockets here in particular. We have the 13 and 15 uh, millimeter for the seat. Uh, you'll notice in the back here I also have uh, a remover for the different pins that are in place there, the plastic uh, holding pins, and then the rollers to get the insulation down. Uh, Torx wrench and some pliers and, and other things just to kind of hopefully make the job a little bit easier. The first thing that we will be doing today is removing the seats and the trim. Uh, really not too difficult to remove the seats. The first thing that will happen, if you can see it, will be these bolts right here. Uh, these are the 15 millimeter and we'll remove the two. The covers just pop right off. We're just going to go yank them right out there. And then once I get the two rears off, I'll slide the seat back and there are two 13 millimeter bolts that will be removed. As we like to say in the business, best laid plans of mice and men. I could not get that bolt undone. So what I have to do is a little bit of uh, penetrating oil. And this is the brand of penetrating catalyst that I happen to use. Works very well. And removing these, again, there's a clip right here going that way. And I've already kind of popped it out. so. Just give it a good hit. Um, rubber mallet or grab right here with a, uh, with a wrench and just pull it straight back. And there you can see the clip that actually keeps it in. Okay, so let's see if this, I'm gonna do this one-handed. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, as I taught my daughters. And let's see if I can get this one here. I had sprayed that earlier. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go spray the front ones, let it sit for a few minutes, and uh, I should have this uh, seat out. Well, I got the back bolts removed. A uh, little bit of effort there, I actually cut myself as well. Now the next thing, this is a motorized seat, whereas the passenger is not, but you're going to slide it all the way back and that will expose the bolts that are on each side here. You can probably see that one a little bit better. And we will now take the 13 millimeter and hopefully the penetrating oil, let's see if I can do that one handed. <clears throat> I don't think so. I'm going to need two hands. Okay, I had to switch to my half inch drive. So I'll give it there so you can see that's uh, 
much longer, get more leverage. Uh, these things have been in for 14 years and uh, they are definitely rusted. So get yourself the, the biggest ratchet uh, that you can. And then um, if you need a cheater, definitely do the cheater. But I would let the penetrating oil sit uh, for quite a while before you move along. Let it go in there because you definitely do not want to break the bolts. So let me, I'm going to put all my weight on it now. <clears throat> Here we go. I'm going to want to hit my hand. <clears throat> there we go. Yay. Pardon the grunts. I probably should have put a little bit of an extension on it, like a one and a half inch. All right, so we got that one. We're gonna go get this other one over here and then repeat the process on the passenger seat. No need to watch that. Uh, with a little bit of struggle, I did get all the nuts and bolts out uh, with, <laughs> with some difficulty. Uh, when I do put them back, the first thing I will do is treat them with some good uh, penetrating oil, wipe them all down so that uh, everything will come out easier if there's a uh, time where I want to re-leather or put new seats in. Of course, I always recommend having a good bowl to keep your parts in. That way you don't lose them. Let's move back over to the car. And what you need to do is you have to lift the seat up just a little bit to get it off the back and then we're going to tip it back. Underneath are two plugs and part of me for just seeing part of me here. Uh, there's two plugs that need to be unplugged before this seat could be removed. Um, you know, I just painted this, so I'm gonna, this was not put back in. I just repainted that yesterday. So I don't want that ruined because that's gonna have to come out. Well, actually it didn't have to come out, but oh well. Okay, so seat forward just a little bit here. And we're gonna lift up. <clears throat> Okay, that gets it off the bolts in the back. And then we should be able to slide and then tip this back a little bit. Let's see, there's our plugs. Ooh, hey. I'm rich. Look what I found underneath there from the previous owner. Thank you very much. I'm a whole dollar richer. With the money that I've spent on this car, good Lord almighty. All right, I'm gonna Bring the camera around so that you can see the plugs. Let me unhook it here from my trusty stand and get my shop light in here. So here are, if we can see it, I think we can. Let's see. I think those are the plugs. Yes. So I got to find where the button is okay so right on the top is just a little snap button and probably one on the bottom too there we go actually that wasn't the right one there we go I heard it snap good and I feel the button here I think you can see what I'm struggling with there's a button right here see it going down there we go okay that's it the seat is disconnected I'm going to lift this bad boy out hopefully you'll see it come out and I'm not gonna wreck anything on the way out and one two three That's heavy. And there you go. That is uh, seat number one that is removed. I'm going to repeat, actually you see my thumb. I'm going to repeat this uh, for the passenger seat. Hopefully it's going to be a lot easier. And uh, then we'll be ready for the trim. And I'll catch you back in a few. All right, the seats are removed if you take a look you can see the condition of the old seat lots of drips and stains and oh 51 cents 
51 cents. Ah, I'm getting a lot of money there. You can see the tears in the old rug as well. Lots of stains. And I neglected to remind or tell you that there is one plug on the passenger seat that is for the pressure sensor. And if you're wondering what these are, these are under seat lighting. I know a lot of people don't like that. Uh, what we need to do next is remove the bottom uh, of the rear seat. Uh, this is actually two pieces. This is the uh, first piece here and then the back and you really don't need to uh, remove the whole thing. You can actually just flip the back seat up and there is a clip somewhere underneath here. I don't remember where it is. There it is. Okay. And it's just a, a little clip right in here that you lift up on. Very easy to uh, to get most of the time if you can find it. I think that's it. There we go. And we can remove that quite easily. Uh, and you can see where the carpet ends and the gas tank and a number of other things are here in the insulation. Unfortunately, from my rear seat, you can see some rippling back there. When the master cylinder, or I should say the top cylinder, there's two of them for the rag top let go, uh, there was a lot of automatic transmission fluid that they use for hydraulics that um, leaked out and seems to have buckled it underneath there. I'm actually thinking of getting a uh, rear seat delete in some point because I never have any passengers and I usually have this whole back part covered anyway with my uh, my wind deflector so it's more of a two-seat coupe and that is the next thing we have to do we have that out of the way the next thing is going to be removing the trim and we'll start with the center console and then work our way around and I'm going to take a break right now for lunch and then I'll come back. Okay, I am back. Uh, now we are going to get to hopefully the easy part. Uh, this will be removing the center console. Let me get a little bit of light on this. We'll be removing the center console and then we will uh, remove some of the trim and then pull this rug out. I neglected to uh, list the 10 millimeter deep socket that will be two bolts that are right in here and here. And we're going to remove those and uh, there are two Phillips head screwdrivers here and here. Um, so the steps that we're going to do, uh, really if, if I could first find a place to get comfortable, what, we, what I need to do is get the light where I can see. Uh, let's see. Good enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, that works. First thing, got to remove the shifter. I uh, love this little billet here. Except in the heat. You just pry up where the leather is and it will unsnap and then you can unscrew it from there. I've got a, quite a few wires here from my stereo head unit that I've got to take into consideration. Actually, you know, I might not need to remove this whole thing, but, you know, it, it makes it easier to get these panels out. And somewhere in here is my Phillips head. Okay, so we'll take the Phillips head. And what should happen here is that this should pop right out. Let me get better leverage here. Much easier doing this with the seat out. This should pop right up, slide out a little bit, if I remember correctly. There we go. And then you've got to get it over the brake. And that is the trickiest of parts. 
got to remember how I did that before. I don't think I put it down. There we go. Yeah, there's a light bulb in here somewhere. I need to do it from the other side. So much for being easier. Maybe I gotta put it down. I'll make it worse. There we go. Just needed some leverage, I guess. Okay. Next thing we need to do is, oh, this is gonna be trickier. I'm gonna get some extensions here. recommend a few extensions make life a little bit easier and if I remember there will be a wire here, uh, yeah, for the cigarette lighter. And I can't see where it is right now, but when I lift it off, I should be able to get it out pretty easily. on there. That's a long post. There we go. Now we have two bolts here and here. I believe they are seven, yep, seven millimeter. So that gives us 15 13, 10, and 7 millimeters deep sockets is what we should be using here. Should remove the sides. <laughs> Should have removed those first. Oh well. Very easy to do, obviously. Now I've got a 
some wires that most of you will not have. I'll have to put them all back in eventually. But with the new rug, trying to do it without leverage. Oh, forgot the wire. Okay, I'm trying to find where the little snap is. You'll be able to see a notch on the front and just kind of get your nail down and there we go. And we got that out. Uh, I'm getting too old for this stuff. Now, start removing the trim. This is the easy part. Just reach underneath and hopefully, there we go. Pull the snaps out. You should be able to do the same thing here. Uh, usually there is a pin here. You would use the either use some pliers or the, the plastic tool that I have that'll work. And you should be able to pop this loose pretty easily. You'll need your Torx to remove your uh, seatbelt right here and just kind of loop it over the back. Really, you don't have to remove this whole thing if you don't want to. Um, because you're just going to be tucking the carpet underneath. Uh, there is a speaker over here and there's lots of foam inside uh, so if you are trying to remove the whole thing it gets a little tricky putting it back so i'll leave that up to you so at this moment i'm going to clean up some of these tools i'm going to pop off some more of the uh, of the molding we do have to get this front molding I'm trying to remember if this just snaps in Now, this side is just a good pull to get the trim off. The other side, in about this position here, is one of the plastic plugs. Um, you know, the buttons just pop that out. I just use this and out it came, and it slid up pretty easily. So that is the trim. We got it all out of the way. Now comes the rug removal. All I'm going to do is slide it underneath, fold it in half, and we are done. But first, let me clean up my mess first, and then I'll be back. Two pieces. Interesting. And there we go. Now, this uh, yeah, this insulation that they have in really moldy oldy. Yeah, it's just breaking apart in my hands. But you know, it's. 14 years old. But not too much rust, which is great. Uh, bottom looks really good. The pan there looks real good. So, let me get down here where you can see me. Well, all that work, we've got, uh, we've got the carpet out. Now, with the next video, what I plan on doing is cleaning this up a little bit more. It's actually not too bad, but I need it to be fairly clean because the new insulation that I'm going to put on is actually foil with, a, um, with an adhesive on the bottom, and I'm going to do the whole pan here. I'm going to put another layer of insulation on top of that and then the rug. Now, 
As I stated earlier, the rug looks a lot thinner than the one that I have in, that I used to have in. So hopefully between the new sound insulation and heat insulation, and then uh, very similar to this material here, the battening, I guess you can call it, and then the carpet, it'll quiet things down a little bit. I got 30, 36 square feet of the insulation, so I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit of a pan inside there, but because of the seat's there, I may not really have to do that. But that's it for this video, and uh, if you like, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.